Okay, this will be good. Patrick Seal is the, the author of The Struggle for Syria, Assad of Syria, the, the Struggle for the Middle East, The Struggle for Arab Independence, several other books. I've read him for years and really the most informed expert on Syria currently writing. It's a great pleasure to have him now joining, joining us uh, by Skype. From France, the south of France, I hear. Lucky you, sir. <laughs> well, come and join me. <laughs> no, I, I, very I, kind of you to say those nice things about my book. Well, I, I mean it. I mean, I've read you for years, and, and you really do understand Syria so well at a time when a lot of people are on TV pronouncing on the country, and frankly, I don't think they really understand it. It's not just black and white. There are nuances here, aren't there? There are great nuances, but of course the situation has changed so dramatically in the last 15 or 16 months. I mean, one has to say that the regime has committed some grave crimes, uh, resorting to live fire right from the start and adopting a policy of repression, rather well, indiscriminate repression. And the opposition has, of course, also, alas, uh, resorted to weapons, which I think is political insanity, because, uh, you see, the opposition can't hope to win alone. And so they depend very much on trying to trigger a foreign military intervention. That is their strategy. And they think that they can do that either by provoking the regime into carrying out massacres or indeed of carrying out massacres themselves. And so there's been a great militarization of the conflict uh, to the extent that, as you probably saw, uh, General Robert Hood, who leads this so-called stabilization mission, has had to call off his monitors. He hasn't ended the mission, but he's suspended it. Mm. So it's a, it's a very serious situation. The regime's strategy is to attempt to crush any pockets of armed rebellion, even if this means using heavy weapons against residential quarters, if the rebels have moved into those quarters. So, so uh, the, the fighting continues. Uh, Kofi Annan's plan is in tatters. And so uh, the, the, the crisis has really moved to a regional level. Right. Now, let's talk a little about Assad. He, he, you, you knew his father. His father was an impressive man. He could be a brutal man, but it, I, don't, I don't think he was a, a sadist. He would use violence if, if he had to. But when we look at what, what Syria became, it was a country where religion was not the dominating factor, where Christians were, were treated uh, with equality. Iran seemed to be a very negative influence, but Assad, the, the current Assad, I believe was trying to reach out if he could to the West. That the alternative may well be uh, a theocracy. Iran, uh, sorry, uh, other countries would certainly like that, the, the Muslim Brotherhood. Could we, could we look back at Assad's time and actually say, my golly, what we have in place is even worse? You see, Assad was a Ba'athist, and the Ba'ath seized power in Syria in 1963. Now, the Ba'ath is a secular movement, and uh, the moment they came to power in 63, uh, the Muslim brothers, or some of them, started to go underground and took to weapons. And their revolt, their terrorist revolt, really, against the, uh, the first Assad's regime uh, started in the late 70s, mid, mid to late 70s. If you recall, there was a terrible incident in 1979 when they gunned down uh, about 80 uh, Alawi cadets at, at an artillery school in Aleppo. Mm -hmm. And then in 82, they seized control of the city of Hama, uh, killed off all the officials and Ba'ath Party members, and then the regime retook control of the town, uh, killing an estimated about 10,000 people, if not more. So after that, the Muslim Brothers were banned, outlawed, M membership was punishable by death, right up till today. And so the Muslim Brothers, the Islam Islamists generally, have a lot for which they would like revenge. Mm -hmm. they, they would like to string them all up. And so uh, another allied development is that about 200 plus so-called extremist Islamist armed jihadis have come into the country across the various frontiers and have joined with the opposition and have carried out suicide bombings and other terrorist acts. So uh, the, the real struggle is between the regime and the Islamists. Mm -hmm. That's the real struggle. 
uh, of course, uh, the, the opposition, uh, particularly the opposition outside Syria, uh, includes a lot of intellectuals, people who've been outside Syria for a long time, people who'd like more freedom, more, 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 more of a, uh, uh, much more of a free, free society. But the real opposition are these Islamists, and the trouble is that they will not negotiate with the regime, and the regime will not negotiate with them. Mm-hmm. It, is a sort of, it is a sort of fight to the finish, yes. kill or be killed. It, it's hard to be optimistic here because the West, I suppose, to a degree, is divided. They, they opposed Assad because of his alliance with Iran. On, on the other hand, they don't want fundamentalists to take over. We have a large, what, 8 9% Christian population. We have Alawites who must be terrified of any alternative. The country could, could break up or hemorrhage many of, it, of its citizens. What, what do you think is the likely outcome at this point? Well, as I say, it's become a regional conflict. You can't separate the Syrian crisis from the crisis in Iran. The tremendous pressure is being put on Iran. Uh, The United States, uh, perhaps egged on by Israel, uh, would like to bring down both these two regimes. And the CIA is said to be there helping the rebels. Of course, the Israelis have now come out very clearly, both both President Perez, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, Deputy Prime Minister Shaul Mufaz, they've all come out in favor of bringing down the Syrian regime. The Israelis would like to bring down the whole so-called resistance axis of Tehran, Damascus, Hezbollah, which they see as the main uh, challenge to their regional hegemony. So it's become, it's become a regional struggle uh, between the United States and Israel on one hand and some of America's European allies, and on the other, uh, Iran, uh, Russia, China. And a further complicating element is the fact that some Arab Gulf states, notably Saudi Arabia and Qatar, they also would like to see the Iranian regime brought down because they think that this is a Shia regime which is threatening Sunni primacy in the region. So it's a multi-stage affair. Yes. Uh, and, and the Syrian people, of course, as so often called in the middle. Fascinating. So we'd, we'd love to have you back on the show in a couple of weeks and, and, uh, and see where well, I'm sure that the situation has changed. Thank you so much for your time. Michael, anytime. time.